Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos and thank you for supporting me. I love all the people that are following my channel. They're a great bunch of people and I really do appreciate it. The first item that I have for today is an article from Cheryl Atkinson entitled The Who's Push for a Global Pandemic Treaty. <clears throat> As I'm sure some of you at least are aware, there's been a push for a while now to create some kind of a, a world, entire world government that rules everybody. And as you should understand, the farther government gets away from the people that it rules over or that it's supposed to be uh, uh, providing for and, and uh, securing, the less responsive that government is to the people because they're so far separated from you they have no interest in what your personal feelings are so the most important government you have is that in your own city or town <clears throat> the second most important is in your state or province the third most important is the government of your nation and the least important of all is a government of the world but the elites want to make it exactly the opposite. So one of the ways they're trying to do this is be a, by creating a global pandemic treaty. Even as the U.S. health agencies, the United Nations World Health Organization, are being heavily criticized for their botched response to the COVID-19 pandemic, who officials are ramping up pressure on all nations to sign a WHO pandemic treaty and amendments to the WHO's international health regulations, which will give them more authority to track, quarantine, force vaccine use, and censor free speech during WHO declared pandemics. The WHO's Director General has been blaming opposition to the UN agency, agency's epic power grab on a torrent of fake news, lies, and conspiracy theories. Yeah, right. Like we don't know, like us dummies out here in the boondocks don't know that you completely screwed up the COVID pandemic and that you would completely screw up any pandemic because you don't care about us. You only care about power. Three days earlier on April 15th, the White House announced a five-year strategy to strengthen global health security plan citing the COVID-19 pandemic as the need to put the U.S. in the driver's seat via bilateral financial investment partnerships with 50 to 100 countries to drive global action towards shared goals and mitigate the impact of health security threats in order to prevent, detect, and contain them at their source. <sighs> The new plan articulates a whole-of-government science-based approach in strengthening global health security. Would that be the same science that they used to say the vaccines would stop the virus and they didn't? The same science that said hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin wouldn't stop the virus when it did? The same science that said that the virus wasn't from the Wuhan lab when we all know that's where it came from? Would, it, would that be the same science? Oh, boy. <sighs> the next item I have is a DEI official at UCLA School of Medicine massively plagiarized her dissertation on DEI. In other words, she got her job by plagiarizing. <laughs> oh boy. Why has the school charted this course? <coughs> Excuse me. One reason is its commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion ideology. UCLA has a DEI program called Cultural North Star. And at the medical school, it is led by Natalie J. Perry. Her official biography says her job is to embed our aspirational cultural North Star's value in our organizational DNA. 
UCLA honored Perry last month for teaching students to do what's right, saying her empathy and radical listening and are to thank for her success as an educator and a leader. According to a Daily Wire and City Journal investigation, however, Perry's academic career is based on fraud. Perry has published a single paper, a 2014 PhD dissertation at the University of Virginia about how colleges should create larger DEI programs. An analysis of the paper found it ridden with the worst sort of plagiarism, reproducing large swaths of text directly from several other authors without citations. The scale of the plagiarism suggests that Perry lacks both ethics and competence and raises questions about academic programs that push DEI. Perry's dissertation lifted passages from 10 other papers. In key portions of her text, she copied almost every paragraph from other sources without attribution. She fails even to mention at least four of the 10 plagiarized papers anywhere in her dissertation. This is, this is a quintessential example of what we now have in academia. People who are not only unqualified, but they're unethical, and they're leading our institutions right down into the drain. The next article that I have is entitled, Feminine Has Left Middle-Aged Women Like Me Single, Childless, and Depressed. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I didn't even highlight anything in this because it's like, it's sort of a duh, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to fall for the lies of feminism, then you're going to think men are terrible and you're not going to want to marry. And if you don't marry, you end up single, you end up childless, and you end up depressed because you're all alone. And as you get older, you realize you have no support system at all. Just the way it is. Uh. Sometimes when I look at these articles, I just think, man... I can't believe that educated people are this stupid. I really can't. And the last article I have is, surprise, surprise, the 2020 election was rigged. Yeah, that's right. The news has been telling you that's a lie. They've been telling you that it wasn't rigged. They've been telling you that there was absolutely perfect election. And of course, anybody with a brain in their head knows that's not true. We're all aware of what took place. But now they have the proof. With the 2024 election season in full swing and a Trump-Biden rematch appearing likely, Americans deserve to know that illegally cast mail-in ballots likely changed the outcome of the 2020 election. However, in 2020, mail-in voting reached an all-time record due to pandemic policies encouraging mail-in voting. They use the pandemic as a cover to cheat, basically. These abrupt and capricious changes to voting procedures in the months before the 2020 election occurred despite the fact that ample evidence showed that mass mail-in voting, unsecured ballot drop boxes, ballot harvesting, and a lack of signature verification would result in a flood of fraudulent ballots that would undermine the accuracy of the election results. You know, this is an area where our European friends are way ahead of us. They don't allow mail-in ballots. Why is it that America does? So they can allow cheating. A groundbreaking poll conducted by the Heartland Institute and Rasmussen Reports in November-December 2023 attempted to assess the degree of fraudulent voting that may have taken place. The results were stunning. Some of the most important findings from the poll include... 21% of mail-in voters admitted that in 2020 they voted in a state where they are no longer a permanent resident. That's illegal. 21% of mail-in voters admitted they filled out a ballot for a friend or family member. That's illegal. 17% of mail-in voters said they signed a ballot for a friend or family member with or without his or her permission. 
Well, that's kind of, I mean, with or without, what's that mean? Was it with or was it without? Why couldn't you specify? 19% of mail-in voters said that a friend or family member filled out their ballot in part or in full on their behalf. Well, you know, I mean, that could or could not be a bad thing. It just depends. Like if my white a wife asked me to fill in her ballot because she couldn't see anymore, I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as I'm filling in what she wants me to fill in. After examining the raw survey data provided by Rasmussen, we found that 28.2% of all mail-in respondents admitted to committing at least one of the four types of fraud asked in the survey, meaning that one in four ballots cast by mail in 2020 were likely cast fraudulently and thus should have been counted. And guess where all this happened? In the swing states. You didn't know that, right? I mean, you weren't aware of that. <laughs> yeah, here we are four years later and they're finally admitting the truth. Sort of. Not really. I mean, there's plenty of them that still insist it was a perfectly pristine election. But we all know, those of us who have a brain in our head and are paying attention, know that that election was rigged. We also know that they're going to try their best to rig this one, and we'll see what happens. But, uh, uh, it's crazy. The Fall of the Republic. As for you, my followers, I pray for you. I pray that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, and that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he will do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.